In this video, we consider the top 2020 iPad Pro features. This new iPad features a new dual camera array with LiDAR scanner built in, potentially giving us a glimpse at the future of Apple hardware. Watch the full video for the details, but first, special thanks to our sponsor, Hyper. So the iPad Pro just received mouse and trackpad support, making it ideal for professional workflows. But no iPad Pro is complete without the HyperDrive USB-C hub. This six port hub available in both space gray and silver brings much needed IO to your iPad Pro. So you just plug it in like this, that's all you do. It's super slim, it mounts flush against your iPad Pro, and you're instantly ready to tackle all sorts of IO, like 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, SD card and micro SD, USB-A and USB-C pass-through charging as well. And while other hubs only support 4K at 30 hertz over HDMI, Hyper supports 4K at 60 hertz. Yes, trackpad support is finally here, but no iPad Pro is complete without the hyperdrive. Click the link in the description to get yours today. And special thanks to Hyper for sponsoring 9to5Mac. So here is the 2020 iPad Pro. Now a lot of people probably right off the bat dismiss this device as basically a clone of the 2018 model. Basically saying there, there's really no reason to consider upgrading to this iPad Pro. And I definitely get that reasoning because Honestly, looking at this device, there really isn't a huge leap between the previous generation and this model right here. But that is not to say that you should automatically completely dismiss this iPad Pro because what Apple's done here with the 2020 edition of the iPad Pro is give us a sneak peek at what the future of the company looks like, at least in some respects, right? And we know Apple CEO Tim Cook strongly believes in the future of augmented reality. And that's really when you boil it all down, that's what this upgrade is all about. Augmented reality really taking that to the next level. Now, it's not fully baked yet. Third party developers will still need to update their applications. And really AR is still sort of in its infancy, but this is a big leap forward for the technology as a whole, as we're gonna discuss in this video. So as you can see, we're doing the unboxing here. We have the getting started guide. We have some regulatory information. Of course, you have the Apple stickers inside the box as well. Thumbs up for those bad boys. All right, let's see what else is in the box. We have our 18 watt power adapter. This is a USB-C charger. It is a fast charger. So you can see the USB-C port there. And we also have our USB-C to USB-C cable. A one meter cable is going to connect to that power adapter with the other end going into the iPad Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and unwrap the iPad Pro and discuss the top new features. So here's our iPad Pro in the hand. Let's go ahead and take the wrapper off. Just pull like that. Slide it out of the wrapper. And there we go. So again, 2020 iPad Pro looking awfully similar to the 2018 model, minus one obvious difference. Now you do have the smart connector still right at the bottom of the device. You have your Apple logo, and then you have several microphones, one here on the side, two on the top. And on each side, you have two speakers to give you a total of four for a quad speaker setup. One of my favorite things about the iPad Pro is the sound quality. You have your side button, of course, you have your USB-C port, which allows you to charge the device and connect accessories. You also have the magnetic attachment slash inductive charger for your second generation Apple Pencil. You have a pair of volume buttons and on this Wi-Fi only iPad, I have the Wi-Fi antenna at the top. And here is the big difference. You have a dual camera module similar to the camera module you find on the iPhone 11. So you get a wide and an ultra wide camera. You also get a LiDAR scanner with a brighter true tone flash. We'll talk more about that LiDAR scanner later and another microphone. And on front, of course, you get the true depth camera system, which allows you to use face ID biometric authentication. All right, so let's get to the new features. You get double the storage on the 2020 iPad Pro for the same entry level price. So for this 11 inch model, which comes in at $799, you get 128 gigabytes of flash storage instead of just 64 gigabytes like you had on the 2018 model for the exact same price. So that is a really welcome addition because 64 gigabytes on an iPad always felt like it 
just wasn't always enough. Whereas 128 gigabytes is pretty generous for an entry level tier. And even if you're editing video or you're editing tons of raw photos, 128 gigabytes of storage is still a lot of storage. I mean, think about this, the entry level MacBook Pro from last year came with 128 gigabytes of storage as well. The most noticeable new feature is of course the new dual camera system. So like the iPhone 11, which features a similar system, you get not only a wide angle camera, but an ultra wide camera to go along with that. And while the hardware isn't as nice or as capable as what you'll find on the iPhone 11, this is still a really nice upgrade. You get a 12 megapixel wide angle shooter, a 10 megapixel ultra wide shooter, with a slightly wider field of view when compared to the iPhone 11 with less overall resolution. But the really cool thing is the software integration. So with the simple tap, you can seamlessly, relatively switch between cameras. You can also slide your finger like this to zoom in and out. It almost functions like you have one zoom lens on the back of your iPad. Apple does a really good job in software hiding the transition. You can still tell, see how it kind of like jumps right there. You can still tell the transition, but I still think it's a pretty good software effect making it seem like this is just one camera you're dealing with instead of two individual cameras with their own characteristics. In our full review, we'll do more in-depth analysis on the camera, comparing it with the previous generation iPad, comparing it with the iPhone 11. Thumbs up if you wanna see that. Now here is the sleeper feature for this new iPad Pro, the LiDAR scanner. LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging. In other words, the scanner uses lasers to help measure distance via light reflectivity. This can measure reflective light up to 16 feet away in an instant. What's the result? Well, being able to map out environments like this quickly, as you can see here from AR Kit 3.5. So the LiDAR scanner allows for quick detection, quick onboarding with scene geometry that lets you create a topological map of your space with labels identifying things like floors, walls, ceiling, windows, seats, and more. Other iOS devices rely solely on relatively inaccurate cameras to learn about your environment. But with the LiDAR scanner, it's able to get this information quickly and with a much better understanding of real world objects in your environment. It also results in much better occlusion for better obstruction behind inanimate objects and people. And this provides a much more convincing sense of immersion in an augmented environment. Now, some of these features are just native benefits of having this new 2020 iPad Pro. For instance, some of the occlusion, the quicker onboarding, etc. But to take full advantage of the new benefits, third-party developers are gonna to have to update their apps. Now, Apple has its Measure app, which provides a pretty good demonstration of some of the new features. The app has been upgraded with more in-depth measurement details. You can even quickly access details on prior measurements, just like that. That's really cool. But here's what's really neat about the new Measure app. Watch what happens when I put the camera closer to my existing measurement and notice how the tick marks automatically appear to make it easier to calculate the distance between the two points. That is really cool. And when you lift your iPad, the tick marks go away, put it back down, they reappear. This is some real futuristic looking stuff right here. And that's not all. Thanks to the LiDAR scanner, the new measure app is able to recognize angles and actually snap to those angles to make it easier to measure things like the corners of walls, furniture, whatever the case may be, it will snap. You'll see a little yellow line. I don't know if you can make it out here, but my measure line's actually snapping to that angle on the box. And here's something really cool. It will automatically calculate the height of a person in a jiffy. So here's why this is so cool. We know Apple's working on an augmented reality headset. And our first glimpse of the LiDAR scanner in the 2020 iPad Pro really shows how it takes augmented reality to the next level. I have no doubt in my mind we'll see LiDAR or at least a similar technology in Apple's upcoming augmented reality headset. And I also have no doubt that we're gonna see some really cool AR apps come down the pipeline eventually. It's just gonna take a while for the software to catch up. Now on the 2018 iPad, only the top tier one terabyte model featured six gigabytes of RAM. Well, on the 2020 iPad Pro, all storage tiers, even the entry level tier gets six gigabytes of RAM. That's gonna be great for video editing, multitasking, graphics applications, etc. In previous iPad Pro models, we usually got a, a pretty significant jump 
in CPU and graphics performance, but here, only the graphics really stand to benefit and it's only by a little bit. On the 2020 iPad, you now get access to all eight GPU cores, so that's gonna give you a little bit better performance when it comes to graphics, as you can see here, about a thousand points better than the 2020 iPad Pro. And when it comes to CPU power, it's actually exactly the same, basically one to one. The A12Z in the new iPad Pro is basically just a slightly more powerful version of the 2018 A12X system on a chip. And that's thanks to Apple fully unlocking the GPU on the 2020 iPad. The 2020 iPad Pro is the first iPad to support 802.11ax, also known as Wi-Fi 6. That's following the iPhone 11 lineup's adoption of the enhanced wireless protocol late last year. In the off chance that you have a router that supports Wi-Fi 6, you'll be able to tap into added performance benefits, perhaps a slight speed boost, and better efficiency when using multiple devices connected to a single network. And like every new major iOS device released, there are new wallpapers. You get four this time around, two dark wallpapers and two light wallpapers. So here is one of the dark, one of the lights, and let's look at the other two. Let's go back. And here is the light for this one. And then we'll switch over to the dark mode. There we go. What do you guys think about these new wallpapers? Let me know down below in the comments. Now, interestingly enough, the iPad Pro is actually sort of overshadowed by an accessory. That is this, of course, the magic keyboard for iPad Pro. It features a real full-size backlit keyboard with one millimeter of key travel, which is going to be amazing to type on. It features a built-in trackpad with cursor support, gesture support, that also is amazing. It also features a floating hinge design, allowing you to achieve the perfect viewing angle. Unfortunately, it is not out just yet, but once it is, you can rest assured that we will be getting this keyboard and we will be reviewing it. So if you wanna see that, let me know down below in the comment section, but it's coming anyway because I just can't wait to try it. And then finally, the iPad now has built-in mouse and trackpad support, which makes sense given the keyboard launch. But what's cool is that this is available for all iPad models that support iOS or iPadOS 13.4. So it's not just an iPad Pro feature, although iPad Pro owners are probably the ones that are gonna be taking advantage of cursor support in iPadOS 13.4 the most, given the fact that there is that awesome looking magic keyboard with integrated trackpad. So this allows you to do things like pinch to zoom in and out right there on the trackpad. It also supports a mouse as well. You have all sorts of gestures that you can use. Of course, you can click on buttons and things like that, but you can also navigate around Safari. There are gestures for multitasking, navigating around the OS. It is not some tacked on feature. No, this is deep cursor integration in the OS. So ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 iPad Pro, if you've yet to upgrade to the 2018 iPad Pro, obviously this is one you wanna look at because even the entry level model comes with not only six gigabytes of RAM, but it also comes with 120 gigabytes of storage. You get that dual camera array with the wide angle and ultra wide angle camera. You get the LiDAR scanner, which is gonna give you that awesome augmented reality support. Obviously not quite there yet. The software still needs to catch up. But those that already have the 2018 iPad Pro, even with all these additional features, there's not a lot that this iPad does now that the 2018 model doesn't do. So with that in mind, it's probably not worth the upgrade, especially considering that the Magic Keyboard actually works with the 2018 iPad Pro as well. That being said, this new LiDAR scanner has so much potential for augmented reality, and I think it really does give us a sneak preview of what to expect from Apple in the future with regard to that AR headset and more. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section about the 2020 iPad, and stay tuned, we'll have a full review. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you appreciate this video, and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to Hyper for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Head over to hypershop.com and get your hyperdrive USB-C hub for iPad Pro. It's a six port hub that adds all sorts of IO to your iPad Pro. This along with new trackpad support makes the iPad Pro a bona fide workhorse. Once again, go to hypershop.com to get your hyperdrive USB-C hub today.